Okay, at this point, I would like to go through all these moments in uh, all the videos I've released so far. I've got about 50 examples I want to take a second look at, either have some new information or uh, I want to backtrack on some of them. Most of them I want to backtrack on. A couple of them I, I want to point out something new that I noticed. It just makes it clearer what's going on in that particular area. So first of all, uh, in the first video, I, uh, I regret not phrasing things in, in a better way. Um, the, the idea that the whole world was machined, uh, that's not necessarily clear what I mean. And to be honest, I don't quite know what I mean. I, I really just mean that uh, some type of uh, planet-wide editing job was performed. I don't mean it was machined from scratch. I think that's highly unlikely. <laughs> Almost not likely at all. But uh, some type of heavy editing with I don't know what type of devices. Uh, so I, I regret that I can't make that any clearer, but since I don't really know what I'm even looking at, I, I can't exactly... I don't feel like I can make it any clearer than that. Um, but anyways, let's let's jump in. Uh, so this one, uh, video one, I was pointing out these scoop the so-called scoop 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 thing but in light of some of the the stuff I've brushed up on uh, coastal morphology and sandbars and stuff I don't think it's necessarily any indications of anything artificial here um, or at least I'm less confident I do you do definitely see lots of artificial stuff here and like in uh, this channels and all, all kinds of stuff but whether or not that project extends to the actual coastline, which is, of course, always evolving, but I would just say I'm less confident now that I've brushed up on uh, sandbar formation and uh, what's it called, cuspate forelands or, or whatever, like uh, currents interfere in certain ways, which will create these pointy patterns and smooth patterns and stuff like that, so, well, well, currents and other processes, so, I don't, I don't fully retract it, but I, uh, I would just say I'm less confident that this is anything artificial, this scoop, scoop, scoop pattern. Okay, this same, same video, part one, part one must have sucked, because almost nobody who watches part one goes on to watch part two, um, so that's why I'm trying to kind of make things a little clearer for whoever's still sticking around, but, uh, so this island, what's, I forget what it's called, but here's South Korea, I think this is part of Japan, so this island, uh, was supposing that it might be, uh, artificially edited pretty much to, f to form the outline of the whole island. But I would say I'm less confident of that now. Uh, this example, for instance, yeah, I mean, it, I guess this just was what rocks look like. I mean, it's not necessarily a so-called gouge or gash. You know what I was saying? Although some some areas do look a little bit more uh, clean, cleanly cut, like this. It's a little. It's a little odd, but once again, not necessarily artificial. Uh, this I, I kind of regret pointing out because it's obviously just erosion. This, uh, I mean, it's 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 discontinuous to be sure, but not necessarily artificial. Same thing here. And once again, I'm not retracting the idea because I mean there is evidence of artificial editing on a global scale with probably very high tech so it's not necessarily unreasonable to ask the question well what else is phony or edited but I would just say 
it wouldn't surprise me if much of the coastline is revamped somehow. I would just say I'm slightly less confident in a lot of cases like this. First of all, it's not super good image and probably just natural erosion. Okay, let's go to a different example. All right, so this is part one still, and I'm pointing out this, what I was calling a pointy, uh, pointy, abrupt edge of this river thing right here. But it's just, I can't see it being anything other than just rising and falling uh, water level. Yeah, it looks a little unnatural, but I mean, see, this is a little goofy, but even then, it's, it's, the, the, car, the whole cartoonish river thing, I'm, I would say I'm slightly less confident of as well. Although, once again, you do see uh, tons and tons of artificial patterns intermingled or mixed in or surrounding or interspersed in, within the, the river systems. So once again, it's not out of the question to, to say, well, are the rivers even natural? But I think for the most part, they probably are, or at least I'm less confident that they're artificial now that I've uh, done a little brushing up. And let me, uh, let me bring up this example where these scientists did this wave table, just water and sand in a, on a small scale in a lab. And they, they do get these, uh, these, you know, these so-called pointy abrupt transitions and stuff, these meanders and all the stuff you see with rivers. So this is, this is just kind of a, a proof of, uh, natural patterns that, that form. It's very similar to what we see with rivers. So, I kind of take that one back. This one, right here. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this is uh, streaks in Venezuela. So, this area right here, I was saying it looks like something swept here and then went out this way, but I don't think there's a real reason to suppose that this area right here is artificial. Uh, it's probably just water doing its thing. Normal, normal weathering. Once again, these are very striking. And here you see the old grid pattern, perhaps. Uh, but After researching the beach ridges and strand plains and stuff, uh, once again, I'm slightly less confident that this, this is artificial. Here is another moment from video one, pointing out these, uh, these what look like abrasion marks or something. Uh, possibly, possibly. And possibly up here as well. And compare that to this part in video 11. These uh, Goats Bluff lookout in uh, Australia. So these what look like abrasion marks, but might just be the layering of the rock breaking away combined with uh, corrasion rocks bumping against rocks or pos I mean maybe wind erosion eroding the layers like that or blowing sand against it possible water erosion as well so it's these are not necessarily abrasion marks that may not be accurate okay now we're on to video two this one this example started off video two and yes, it's very striking and abrupt, as if something sh shaved up the side of the cliff, and these 
uh, I don't know what you'd call them, spines or dikes or ribs up the edge of it. Yeah, they are striking, and but I would say it's more likely that this is natural erosion. Once again, it wouldn't surprise me if it is artificial in light of some of the other stuff. It's just the, the coast, a lot of the coastline stuff I'm, I'm backtracking a little bit on. So, I mean, could be either way, but it doesn't, doesn't look to me as suspicious as it did before. Just as my understanding evolves and, man, I, I probably al already learned all this, all the key terms and the coastal processes and geology and all that stuff in grade school, but I just, <laughs> I don't remember any of it. I know it's at play and that's enough to know that there's a good chance this is natural or it's most probable that it is. But uh, I'm, I'm glad I brushed up on, on the material because now I know I got to be more careful. Okay, more, more stuff from video two. So similar to that first example, these abrupt cliffs and what I was saying looks suspiciously clean, but once again, less confident about that now. Yeah, I uh, honestly, I did the research uh, several weeks ago already, so I'm starting to forget why I lost confidence in some of these. Or the very the particular reason I just know that I did, <laughs> so this this is probably natural, or at least I'm not ready to say that I'm super confident that it's artificial. Although you definitely see huge areas of Scotland and probably England. I haven't looked at England that much, but you, I just looked at Scotland recently, and there's huge areas that are just cleared away, completely clear away. And whether that, uh, and I, when I say cleared, cleared away, I mean by something that's other than just the natural trajectory of farming and all that stuff and agriculture and modern, uh, our modern era of history. So there is large scale earthworks or editing of some, some kind, but I, I don't know whether it extends to these cliff sides. I, c I can't really say that I have a, a good reason to go all in on that. Let's put it that way. All right, same video, part two, tabletop mountain. And all I really need to say here is, yeah, it is striking, it is abrupt, which is curious, but not necessarily. I mean, see how rough it is? It could just definitely be a, uh, there's a weak point or a weak, weaker fissure along the interior of the rock here. And then uh, differential erosion, it just eroded along that weaker fissure, uh, resulting in a, an abrupt looking vertical face. So less confident on that one. Okay, part three, coastlines. Let's see what this example is. So I'm talking about sweeping the, the coast. Nah, I don't know about the sweeping the coast thing anymore. I mean, sandbars are pretty striking and they do look very regular in some places. The, the thin strip of lands, uh, like right here, it's very regular and straight and continuous, but that's there's good reason to believe that that's just from natural processes. So less confident on that one. What's this? Video three. This would be, I forget which type of delta, either this looks like a, maybe a bird foot delta or river dominated delta or wave dominated. I can't remember which what, but um, these streaks, it's really just a result of the river meeting the ocean and the rich dynamic processes that combine to, to create the feature. So I take that one back. 60%. This is another spot. Video three. Machine? Maybe. Probably not. Maybe, though. <laughs> I know, I'm annoying. And this video is super long and tedious, like my last one. Or like some stuff, whatever. It's, it's necessary, I think. At least for the diehards. 
They might need to look at this. Probably natural. And the the parallelness is just and the regularity is just the, the changing water level, I believe. Or I guess I already explained what causes them. Man, I, I, I spent a long time researching beach ridges and strand planes and all the all the stuff that goes into these streaks. <laughs> but I already forgot most of it. I think there's holes in my brain. Okay, so part three. Cart I think I'm talking about cartoonish rivers here. But once again, I, I don't know about that. And uh, hmm, what do I need to say about this? Well, first of all, any sufficiently advanced tech or or mind would be able to mimic natural patterns with almost indistinguishable accuracy. So, I mean, if that's the case, I mean, you can't you can't even tell whether that I don't know whether that blade of grass ten feet from you right now is is natural, but. So, I mean, it's, there's almost no point in discussing it, but, uh, yeah, I would just say I'm like 25% less confident about the cartoonish river thing, just to kind of throw an arbitrary percentage out there. And I wouldn't say I'm embarrassed that I'm slightly wrong or, uh, was a little cavalier in my speculations, but, uh. I know I'm onto something, I just don't quite know what it is, so this is part of the process. Know what I'm saying, bro, ham, sister ham? Um, this is Mono Lake in California, video three. And what am I... Just the streaks thing, same same deal. The straight meets curved is, is pretty interesting. But not necessarily artificial. And... We do get into some some weird stuff in other examples where we see like abrupt right angles and stuff within the ridges. So that needs to be taken into consideration or uh, considered as clues, possible clues to something. But Mono Lake, less less confident about it. Okay, so this video, or this example, video three again, talking about the jaggedness. And there's like, uh, here, 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 like kind of like a sawtooth jagged pattern along the coast. And there's a good chance that that's just, these are just the more resilient headlands that uh, get eroded around. And they stick around for a bit longer than the surrounding area. And, uh... That's the conventional theory anyway, so, I mean, just because it looks this kind of jagged doesn't mean it's artificial, so, I'd say I'm quite a bit less confident on that one. Okay, we're on to video four. This one, so I was super stoked on this example. But if you watch some of these time lapses of, of spits forming and sandbars, it's, it's not so surprising to to see something like this it's just the pointiness here and then the the continuity with the the curve here was uh was making me wonder if it's artificial and i was calling this a crazy example but whoops <laughs> i don't i don't think it's so crazy anymore necessarily could be artificial but backtrack let's say i don't know 32 percent in my level of confidence of artificiality leaving me at I don't know 32 percent confident that this is artificial um, does that help and this is video nine and uh, I think this I think we're in Pakistan here yeah Pakistan and uh, what I was pointing out was this uh, underwater ridge here that's parallel to the coast and I was finding that to be slightly suspicious or quite suspicious and the abruptness of this or straight 
straightness on this cliff side. I don't quite know how to explain that, but I don't necessarily think it's unnatural anymore. I'm less confident that it is. So let's skip to this this underwater ridge here. It's parallel to the coast. There we go. There's this thing. And once again, I think there's it could just be this is the former dominant or predominant coastline and then the water level changed a bit and now the primary coastline is back here so it could be that this was where the coastline was for a long time and then some some change caused it to meander a bit just due to natural erosion and, and wave action and all that so this is probably just a former coastline and not a so-called sweep mark, which is what I was hypothesizing. So back to video four. Again, I was calling this a, a crazy example, but I don't know. The straightness here is a little interesting, but it's more likely that this is the probably a combination of factors like this was the original coastline here or shoreline and then a spit formed along it something like that and then this lake kind of eroded over time as well as water seeped into this area or something like that something natural yeah so I I don't necessarily think this is a crazy example as I was saying before I feel it's necessary to do all this because there is so much artificial stuff, but I think it undermines the validity of that. If I if I go on a speculation spree and start calling out all this other stuff. So this is a very sharp point. This is video for Canada and Great Lakes still. And the very sharp point is just a kind of a natural confluence of uh currents and wave energies coming from slightly different directions winds as well possibly you can imagine it just eroding from this direction and from this direction and it's kind of this the boundary of it changes over time oh i sh i could have explained that better but the cuspate foreland it's it's pretty natural and this ridge here might not be suspicious at all, so whoopsie daisy. Video 4 still. Another sharp point, same deal. Um, so once again, less confident that this is artificial. This abrupt line here is a little... That might just be the modern build line as I'm saying here. But the she sheared over thing, I'm still still keeping that on the table that edges of coasts were like sheared over or whatever but consider also that cyclones are and although this is a lake and not a not an ocean front but i don't know the sheared over thing like sheared flat i'm still keeping that on the table especially since we we do see some so much of that grid pattern in such areas not necessarily right here but i'm keeping that on the table but less confident that it's artificial rather than natural. And I mean, so, some of you guys are probably thinking I'm like too wishy-washy and I'm sure other people are thinking that I'm too confident in some of the stuff I'm pointing out, but I don't know. I'm just finding my trying to be intellectually honest and trying to trying to debunk myself as much as possible so that I don't spew a bunch of sloppy examples or whatever. So even this, like Kilch, Kilchless Meadow in Canada, which interestingly my place mark had disappeared for this. I don't know why that is, but I had it, I re-added it. So it's a very uniform groove here, but that's not necessarily anything other than an exposed um, streak or a beach ridge or these uh, the coastal dunes or uh, beach ridge is the best word, but you know, these, the parallel streaks we're seeing, this could just be 
uh, were two two of the most elevated streaks that happen to be exposed, and not necessarily the path of something. So is this the path of something? Uh, you know, maybe not. I don't think it's accurate to call it a channel, which is what I was asking here. So you see the, the outline of it here. See it continuing here is a fairly uniform line all the way to down here, but boy, I uh, this is one of the almost one of the smoking guns that I was I was using as a an example of artificiality, but I uh, I let's go with I'm forty percent less confident in this example. Let's let's put it that way. But let's say it would at this point it would surprise me more if this is artificial than than natural. So sometimes something can be counterintuitive, but you need to adjust your intuition. Okay, we're on to video five now. Okay, I like this example. It's pretty cool. But so what I was pointing out is the the pointiness here and the these right here and this guy in the middle. So you got this guy in the middle here, got this as what I was calling a possible continuation of this curve here, and this curve continuing out to this rock somehow, you know, with a possible, uh, quote, path, unquote, right here. But if, if it were the case that these three rocks were here already, then the coast would form like this. You know, the chicken egg thing that I discussed earlier, if you remember, the incoming waves from from the ocean would cause uh, a diffraction pattern, which would result in uh, an irregular coastline with more land here and less land over here. And I think I showed some animations of that already. Constructive and destructive interference of the incoming wave energy as you know, this is almost like a double slit experiment right here, if you know what I mean. So it's like, yeah, I, it's interesting. It is, it is cool to look at, but I think that the answer to the chicken egg question, which I raised is that, yeah, it's natural and this, it just forms this way due to the natural wave patterns around these rocks. Once again, same video, Australian coast, and uh, same same type of deal here. So, first of all, the image isn't even that clear. I can't really even tell what that is if it's rocks or like a lump of sand. I mean, you know, whatever that is. But I, it's I would say it's more likely that this is these were present, and then this coastline is. A result of the diffraction pattern of the incoming wave energy. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it's the sweet thing, but I would say that's less likely than the, the natural explanation. So, saying this is probably natural and not artificial. So, we're on to video six. This is in Russia. Um, going over my Reddit post here. And this thin strip of land, which I was finding suspicious, I just don't find that quite as suspicious anymore. It's just the, once again, it's slightly surprising to the uninitiated uh, observer, uninitiated into coastal morphology and all that. But it's what nature does, apparently. So, same thing here, this line at the end of the the so-called scoop. Well, first of all, there's a river right here, so it's probably just the river meeting the, the end of the, the coastline here, and then there's some kind of interference pattern which produces these strips, which is not artificial. These uh, so-called chunk taken out of the rock, I do think that's pretty... I, I don't quite know what to say about that at this point. It's a little... I would say it's still... It's still suspicious to me. Um, it remains a suspicious thing that it's that it, this pattern forms, but it could still be natural. So I'm, I, uh, 
I can't throw it out super confidently that this is artificial. I don't know if I even said anything new just now, so hopefully I'm not repeating myself, but this, I would say still suspicious, but not necessarily that suspicious. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, like, this whole thing is like super confusing to me. So I, I, I can't even really articulate what I mean because I don't even freaking know what I mean. <laughs> I just know something's up and some things indicate what that something might be. And Oh, uh, like I said in this Reddit post, and I may have said in the videos prior to this one, I may not have, but uh, you can just expect that 50 to 95% of the examples I show are either modern work or totally natural. So I'm not sure whether I declared that in the videos, but yeah, I just like to reiterate that, that unfortunately a lot of the stuff I show is going to be, we're not really going to be able to come to a conclusion. So you just have to suspend disbelief enough to consider that it might be artificial, but always, I don't know, assume the conventional or mundane explanation is the most likely one. These scrape marks are so-called, in some places they look super right angled and stuff, and, uh, abruptly carved out and stuff, but here I, I, I don't know that that's anything other than the, the natural pattern of the rock. Same thing here. I mean, it's the Cypress Coast. And yeah, I mean, it's probably just the bedrock. It's very, very straight and very, very parallel, which is a little odd to me, but then again, that doesn't, doesn't mean it's artificial. So, And some of these linear gaps, I would say this is most, most likely just natural erosion. Okay, so these nubs between the, what I was calling nubs, or I didn't really have a good word for it, and headland would be the most appropriate technical term now that I've brushed up on my theory. But uh, the, the sweep, 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 once again, not quite as confident in that because the presence of this rock here would result in a differential in the wave energies hitting the coast. And so you get this point here and this is just differential erosion. This stands and this doesn't, just due to the natural variation in the, the land, the integrity of the rock, or the strength of it, and material properties. So I don't think this is really a scoop, scoop, scoop thing, like I was saying. <laughs> so as I was re-watching a lot of these videos, I was like, kind of, <laughs> kind of thinking the same thing that some of the detractors were saying on the, on this reddit post in the comments that I, I don't think anyone said it directly but I kind of sound like an airhead <laughs> just because I'm a, I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't do my due diligence on that coastal theory or geology and coastal morphology and all that so I think I, I was a little premature in some of my analysis I think the newer reddit post doesn't have this example because it's not as doesn't look that artificial anymore to me. Okay, more stuff from video six here. Let's keep going doing. Okay, so the heart at the end of a line, so-called. This dude was calling them ancient arrows. So this land before time blog, very good. And he's got, I think, three articles right now on ancient arrows or what I was calling heart at the end of a line and so in some cases they're fishing traps and he's wondering if they're either pointers to point in the direction of water flow or some type of pattern or structure to uh, get the water to evolve in a certain way around it or uh, to create water patterns that evolve the land around in certain patterns to create certain formations passively, if that makes sense. So like you uh, construct this thing and then the, the natural flow of water interfering with the, 
the geometry of this creates some type of landform that has some type of purpose. So he's kind of going with the water management angle on this. And uh, he's also talking about the fishing traps angle as well. And I should do a whole episode on this, this guy's blog because he shows a lot of great stuff. Uh, let's take a look at some more uh, arrows. So, so here's like the fishing traps. And I, I got a closer up picture and they're, they're actually, this is like just bamboo here. And I guess these are fishing traps. And the, the, the question is whether it's a modern retrofitting of an ancient pattern since the pattern is seen so widespread in such random areas. Um, let's take a look at a couple more images here. Sometimes in the middle of nowhere. So this is pretty interesting here. Arrow. So I, what I wanted to add was that it might be a retaining wall. That might be the most likely explanation for some of them. And then that pattern might just be also useful for fishing traps and it might be a variety of purposes for all the different areas you see this phenomenon. So this hard at the end of the line thing, I think it's either modern retaining walls or slightly older retaining walls, but not necessarily in a conspir conspiratorial or lost history sense. It could just be older cultures making these things for uh, to combat erosion. That might be the most likely explanation. And it's tough to tell what it's made out of, but whatever. Moving on. More stuff from video six. Land remaining between sweeps. Nah, not quite as confident in that anymore. I think it's just differential erosion and wave energy uh, eroding around this obstacle. So shut up, Brian, you piece of whatever. More from video six. I think all these, what I'm looking at is all these lines here. And I think it's just sloshing back and forth of the, the water. Creates, uh, you know, perpendicular to the, the coast, creates these grooves that just kind of a, what's it called? Basically kind of a straight line, debatable. But uh, what's it called? The swash and, and I forget the technical terms, but the, the water coming to and fro kind of creates these natural grooves. I don't think these are necessarily the edges of some kind of sweep. Uh, again, hard at the end of the line, so-called. I think it's most likely some type of retaining wall. Okay, on to video seven. So I opened video seven with this example, which I was saying was kind of a crazy, blatant example, but eh, <laughs> not so sure about that anymore. And it is interesting because along this whole area, we see like, uh, I don't know, scraped or pat patchy pattern, which I'll do an, a whole episode on uh, patchy areas in the future, future. But so that's a possible indication of some type of artificial intervention, whether modern or ancient. But I was this this thing right here saying, man, how would that form? inside of this thing but it could be this formed first this outer one and then this formed or this inner one formed and then this outer one formed later so i think we're just dealing with uh long time scales and different coastal action resulting in different features and then 
you know, maybe at some point this somehow formed and then this one was protected so it retained its shape somehow. So I don't necessarily think it's a so-called sweep or scoop of, a, of some kind of tool or a tooling process or editing protocol. It might be, wouldn't surprise me if it is, but I'm leaning towards no at this point, at least on this example, and most of the coast stuff. Let's see, we do see this pattern at the edge here, this large scale clearing, clearing out of, or whatever this is, remains of ancient something, uh, structures or canals or irrigation or whatever it is. Um, and it could, of course, be modern. Hard, hard to tell. And this whole area has that pattern, although it's populated as well. But let's keep going. Video seven. The streaks here. I was noting, uh, commenting on the abruptness and kind of the the change of directions of these uh, these streaks here. The but I think that's due to changing currents and seasonal variations and, and storms and stuff overtaking existing patterns and kind of overriding it. You know, like, uh, yeah, just over overriding the existing pattern to create an abrupt transition between these streak directions. And then the, the edge of it here, I think this is just where the, the river here in some type of flood season or something, it, it probably, the water level went up to here and eroded away all the, the rest of the streaks over here. And then once the water levels uh, receded again or subsided, it left this somewhat abrupt edge here. Um, it took all this, eroded away all the streaks that continued over here and just left an abrupt end there. So. It's interesting, it's dynamic, it's striking, but is it artificial? Meh. Probably not. Maybe not. Poo poo. All right, uh, episode 10. So this path here, part 10, so-called gap. Um, I think that's just differential erosion, maybe, probably. Oh yeah, it's just stacks and, uh, you know, the like I showed before in those slides where there's, you know, a crack forms and then a, ro uh, a cave starts to form and then an arch and then the arch collapses and then you have the stack out here and uh, the headlands behind it. So there's a, a gradual process of erosion in this area that's really just natural. Part 10 again, gap, yeah, Psh, nah dog. That's just the same, same process of, I think, the same process of crack forms then, you know, this was one continuous piece of land, crack forms in a weak spot, and then a cave, and then a arch, as more of it erodes away, and then the arch collapses, and the water takes away the material that fell and uh, gradually so you're left with this so-called gap but I don't know about that being artificial same thing here yeah we're about halfway through my uh, reanalysis of my videos so uh, give yourself a, a cinnamon stick Okay, let's check out a couple of these. 
it's interesting because of the angle. So you've got the, the, the curve of the coastline and then what looks like some type of gap or gash here. But I think it's just the water as it came in here, it wanted to like slosh backwards or slosh back. There's like a, a direction this way that it wanted to flow back and it also wanted to flow back this way and gradually it eroded a, a path out this way, most likely. Something like that. I just, I don't know if that's, you know, an artificial path or something. This example was not in one of my videos. It's in France. But it's another one of those, what looks like what I was calling a path uh, at the end of a sweep. So it's, I just want to throw it in here because this is quite common to see a, I don't know, a gap or whatever, a linear path at the edge of a curved bit of coast. But I was thinking it's likely that this is just a, uh, a ribbon of differentiated uh, bedrock material that eroded differently. And then there was like a feedback loop between this linear ish feature affecting the coast and then the coast affecting this feature over long periods of time so it kind of back and forth zeroed in on a uh, a continuous looking thing that kind of looks like a a sweep and somewhat similar thing here this is an interesting example because you have these streaks which i was questioning are, might be artificial, but I think are natural, but you also have these straight lines through them, and I'll just let it play, and uh, see, like this, kind of abrupt here, although that could be natural, but some of these, like these little ticks, which might be modern, but I wonder... That just looks like a natural fissure of some kind. But then you have these these ticks here, which might be modern. Or some type of artificial editing. A couple more here. And then of course here as well, these right here. Gotta wonder what these are. Looks pretty straight. Just kind of curious and not necessarily on axis or aligned with this, so or what I was calling a sweep. And when I say so called, I've been saying so called a lot throughout this. And I mean so called, so called by me so far. <laughs> so. Like the so-called sweep, so-called by me, I don't think it's a sweep. And these straight-ish ticks are interesting, but note that they're not completely aligned with what would be a potential sweep thing. They're slightly misaligned. So I... Yeah, I don't know what these are, but they're still, they're still pretty interesting. Not quite sure what I wanted to say with this one. This is video 10 again. These linear features could just be edges, former edges of, of Riverway. Tough to say. Man. I apologize, I can't remember what I wanted to say about this. And you, in this whole area, you do see many linear paths over here. And it's not clear what those lines and gashes are. Like that looks pretty, pretty artificial.
Here we're checking out these streaks of trees, streaks of trees and streaks of absence of trees, or just uh, growth according to the, the ridges or flowy pattern. And I just kind of wanted to say that I'm not quite so sure that that's any type of artificial thing. This is interesting. See this looks this here looks like a path of some kind. Almost. And I, I don't think I noticed this when I was presenting this. So I just wanted to point that out. Looks like one, but then I've I've also thought that these so-called paths could be the the boundaries or the, the banks, former banks of rivers. Like uh you know what I mean? So it could just be a long standing river that formed uh had a a solid pattern form or crystallized in, in the geology and then it slowly er eroded away as the water level overtook it, the ocean level. And it's interesting that this is cleared away here. So maybe this has something to do with some type of artificial device. So I guess I just wanted to point out this you know, you have this path, but then there's this. So I hadn't noticed this part before. So there's, there's this, and I don't know if it's artificial, anyways. So I don't. Sorry, uh, I don't. I don't know what to say. This just like, it's striking, but not necessarily artificial. Don't want to spend too much time on that one. Same thing here. Probably just the the natural process of a crack forms, then a, a cave, then an arch, then a then it all the arch collapses and stuff like that. Probably not sure. And this example in Dana Point, I was gonna go over here, but I got too lazy. These holes are interesting, but I think it's just natural erosion, and then this what looks like a path. Or a gap it's just the way the water flows so there's there's some holes here but it's I don't think it's the path of something I think it's just you know the water these holes naturally formed and then and there's some natural natural erosion that had a preferential path and see kind of a faint path there, but that's not necessarily anything other than the water sloshing back and forth, like the, the waves come in this way, and then some of the waves, some of the water goes back out this way, and some of it goes through this way, through the, the hole or the arch. And then this, this, what I was calling a groove or a path, maybe this is just natural erosion from the, the water action. So I don't necessarily think this is a great example of potential artificiality. Okay, so Australia. I was kind of stoked on this area of coast, but I had this... Surprised I didn't think of it before, but there's some rivers in this area, and uh, I'm just thinking now that these rocky boundaries of this might just be the uh, edges of former riverbanks that got overtaken by although you don't see the rest of the river here not sure why you know you don't see any of it here but uh it could be there was a, a riverway extending out here and then as the coast line uh advanced and ate away more of the the continent the the river gave way to the ocean and then, but parts of the river remained or the shape of it. So this could be just an old river eroding here. That makes sense. And uh, let's go to Google Maps here. Because just down the way from that, you have uh, this. 
and the historical photos, I found a clearer image of this. There we go. So uh, this long edge of something. I think that's just the former coastline or let's see, where was the, there we go. Right here. So see this, what I was calling a, a path or a possible, possible tool path. I think this is just a former river because I mean, we see river right here. So it makes total sense that this is just a branch of the river that used to be there. So now I feel stupid, but whatever. So former river right here, more edge of it there. And I'm probably joined up somewhere back here. I don't know. So that's pretty cool, but I don't, I can't really say that that's artificial anymore just because it's most likely part of the river. And like, see this curve here? It seems to coincide with this here. So I think that the river at some point was doing this. And then the, the ocean ate into the land and took took over, overtook the, the river system here. So all we see is the faint outlines of the river remaining, most likely, I think, now. Yeah, here, here it was in the video, video 11, and the historical photo showed it much clearer, the 2011 photo specifically. So probably just a river. Hmm, can't remember what I wanted to say about this one. Got a linear edge parallel to the coast. And I don't remember what I wanted to say about that, so whatever. Oh, this is a quick one. This is just modern. I went back and looked at a the photos from a couple of years ago and somewhere in the Middle East, I can't remember where, but pardon me for uh, including this in video 11 because it's just modern. So sorry about that. This island, it's interesting. It's striking. These are very straight and parallel, <sighs> but not necessarily artificial. It's cool looking. Um, but it could just be the, the water level was much higher. And then, so you have these streaks around the island. And then as the water level changed, the, the streaks formed. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. This is in Laguna Beach. This, uh, what looks like a path through stone, which is pretty striking, uh, if that's what it is. So I actually went here, I walked over here and I looked at it, but unfortunately this, this whole area here was under several feet of sand, so this, this rocky area isn't exposed at the moment. It's just sand, so I couldn't look at any of this. I guess I could go back with a shovel and and dig and try and get lucky and be able to look at this. But uh, it looks like a path through the stone, some type of path, but it could also be an example of subduction, uh, which is the land at the ocean kind of folding under, it's kind of a, a, a plate tectonic type activity where the Right at the coast, the ocean land goes under the, the land mass, the continent. And this could be like the, the crease or the line where that's occurring, maybe. I don't know. That's just one thought. Um, there are possible explanations, natural explanations for this. I still think it could be artificial. Uh, I don't know. I did walk around this whole area and... Um, 
I can't say I saw anything artificial looking. I wasn't able to look at this once again because it was under the sand, but this whole area, I walked around and I did not see anything other than completely natural looking erosion patterns. I did see a big pipe that was like extending pretty far out into the ocean just in disrepair. I mean, who knows, it could be some kind of ruins, but it's probably just modern work that's no longer in use. Here's another view of it. Yeah, so I walked around this whole area and nothing really unnatural looking. And I walked around this area as well. Some of these uh, tide pool type things and these walls along the coast. And I took some pictures, but I, I didn't think it really worth including because it could just be modern work. It's not clear like this stuff. I don't know. It could be modern or ancient. It's not clear. It's just kind of like brick and cement. It's not really, not really easy to tell what it is. All right, and similar to that Laguna Beach example, we had this area, which is like seeming path here. And this gap here, now that I've brushed up on the, the theory, I would, I would say this is probably naturally eroded away, just at a weak point, differential erosion. But um, see, like this gap here, So this gap might be completely natural, but also you have to consider the presence of this, this faint path here. It's very similar to the that Laguna Beach path. So let's take a, another look at that uh, Laguna Beach path. So here's here's that what looks like a some type of track in stone or path or whatever. And then that same type of thing is, I can't remember where this is, but you see that, that type of path here, kind of going across here, see like that, see that, that doesn't look like a natural thing to me. See it more prominent, like right there. Um, which is why I'm still keeping this artificial coastlines aspect on the table because this is not necessarily the most natural way for this to erode in a kind of a linear path like that, or a, not necessarily perfectly straight, but some type of path is what it looks like. So I just wanted to bring that up, the comparison between that one and the Laguna Beach one. Still very interesting. Video 11 again, what did I want to say here? Hmm, maybe that this could be the edges of a river that used to be here. Hmm. Or some type of artificial path like we were just looking at, but could also just be runoff or like, oh, you see more of it there. Yeah, it could just be like a river. I think this example, I just wanted to say that 
it's, I'm less confident that there's anything artificial about it, since it could be the edges of a river or something like that. This example, uh, I wanted to discuss the, the orientation of it, because it is interesting that it's this uh, so-called gap here is aligned perpendicular to the, the coast here. I was speculating whether this is a, a maneuver and uh, so the alignment of this you now we're seeing other places where there's a gap like across here more parallel to the coast and here it's perpendicular and I think yeah it could be like a sweep and uh, an exit but I, I kind of doubt it I, th I think it's probably more just natural statistical variation and you might expect orientations in all directions, like in a diagonal and even uh, in the 3D plane. So this is, uh, I don't really know if that's suspicious looking. This was one of my favorite examples and I still like it, but this thing is like, uh, so this would qualify as a tombolo, uh, new word I just learned, tombolo which is like there's kind of an island here and then uh, the wave action along the sides of it, the incoming waves and currents create a uh, depositing of sand behind it, between it and the land. And it's pretty well understood. So this, this aspect here is uh, not surprising. And then this angle here is a little irking to me. It's somewhat like the straight lines there, but once again, it could be more natural than I thought it was with also some, some type of artificial editing. I don't know about the windshield wiper sweep. Still keeping that on the table, but I don't actually quite remember what I wanted to say about this example other than that this tombolo thing is is actually pretty pretty natural. So the island, the mainland, and then sand which collects in between them. Once again, another example of that type of tombolo phenomenon. This this example was mentioned in the New Earth video, and uh, I hope I didn't influence people in a negative way because this is just a natural gathering of material between an island and the mainland. So here's the mainland and then this stretch here is kind of a natural way that the, the wave energy bends around this island. So there's a deposition of material that happens along this these areas as we saw before. Then we also need to consider these uh, artificial oval patterns over here, which again could be modern, but maybe not. But this was mentioned in the, the New Earth videos, possibly being these strips being artificial. But I don't think so. I think it's just a traditional uh, tombolo, or one example of one. Okay, video 11 again. This path here. Hmm. See, this is reminiscent of this. Here, a little bit, or here, this one, the path we saw here, but, uh, you know, this could be some kind of path, but it could also just be the, the water naturally creating a path by uh, flowing out in this direction over long periods of time and just eroding the rock away in this path.
So I'm not too confident that that's artificial. I don't know. This year, I just wanted to say that just because there's a, a path here doesn't mean it's artificial. It could be, you know, the water as it sloshes back and forth, the swash and backwash, I think it's called. It just um, naturally forms a groove that's possible. Okay, this one, I was pretty excited about this one. I'm not necessarily super stoked on it anymore. It's pretty cool still, I think. But I don't know if it's artificial and I will, uh, again, it's very visually striking, very straight. Here's an image of it. So here's the linear edge of it, and here's the other edge. You can see it going out that way. This is it right here. And let's look at a more detailed image of it. Here we go, this is a pretty high resolution image. So you see it there, you see the edge of it. Kind of messy, kind of clean. But I would say there's a good chance this is just natural. Still keeping it on the table that it might be artificial. But uh, here's, it's called Canal Rocks because it looks like a canal. Uh, here's the description of it. Okay, I'll read you the, how it, the formation of it, the theory behind it. So the channel between the rocks is formed from the coastal waters eroding the granite nice away over time. That's a type of rock. And the rocks that make up the canals are part of the Lewin Naturalist Ridge or Lewin Complex. I'll read about that in a minute. And um, so it's just erosion that created that straight canal. I think the rock pattern just happens to be straight there. So uh, is what it is. Again, yeah, it's possible that it's artificial. I don't know. In light of some of the other stuff, it's not unreasonable to continue considering that. So I want to show you this area along the coast here. I went and basically looked at this whole area of Australia, all the coast around it, and made a few more notes. Uh, the Lewin Naturalist Ridge. It's just basically a ridge of rock formations and there's caves and stuff in that area too which is pretty cool new and naturalist park which is along that that line here of australia i'll show you in google maps in a minute so it's like narrow bands of rock that kind of just go along this area of australia and it's pretty well studied so like I shouldn't just go right out and say I think it's artificial. So let's go into Google Maps here and go along this area, the Lewin Naturalist Ridge. Here's the canal rocks and possible continuation of it here. Possible path. Or what I'm leaning more towards now is it's just natural streaks of rock that are eroding away like that. So here's another, you know, canal rocks right here. And then up the way a bit, there's, I noticed this straight-ish thing that's either, again, natural erosion of differing rock layers. And you kind of see something there, which is more messy, and it's possible that there's just some natural variation that some areas are a little bit crisper looking than other areas. And you know, that's slightly interesting, but nah. and you see similar thing there. 
So we've got this here and this here, and I don't know whether I can say I think that's artificial. It might just be the natural ridges of rock or ribbons of rock eroding. And something there, maybe, maybe not. But let's see, what else? Okay, this gap here, similar to the canal rocks. So is that just natural differentiation in the, or natural erosion along a ribbon of differentiated rock material? And here's a good example of just the presence of an island creating this cuspate foreland, I think it's called, and it's nothing other than the wave energy bending around this obstacle to hit the, the coast differently, which results in a point. Anyways, that's not the topic of this um, segment. So here's another gap here. Interesting, once again, but not necessarily artificial. Let's keep going. And canal rocks up here, and we're right here. And here I just wanted to show these uh, what look like gashes, but it's I think this is this is one of those uh, canal type variations in the bedrock, and it's like one of these is one of these types of ribbons is responsible for the the canal look to the, the rocks there, which takes the wind out of my sails a little bit, deflates me, and more of that streaky, kind of canal-y look. It's probably responsible for the, the canal appearance of it, but may not be artificial, so there you have it. This is an example from video 11. Once again, just this path here is probably just swash and backwash of the, the water. That's in accordance with this coastline and it erodes this path rather than it being an artificial path. Same thing here. So extension of this sweep, extension of this sweep. Well, maybe not. It could just be that the rock was in this pattern here and then that affected the water in such a way as to form the coast like this. I think that's more likely. Okay, almost done. So this example, video 11 again, pointing out this thing here, gap. So straight edge here and then curve and with that the gap there but once again I'm less confident that this is any type of artificial thing because I mean this this would just be like an area of the headland which uh, slowly eroded away like some type of crack form and then the crack widened became some type of cave even and then uh, an arch and then the arch collapsed and then here's a stack and uh, and slowly this part will probably disappear too so and it's just in the process of doing that so not necessarily any kind of sweep or whatever it's this this little island is there's kind of a path here or what looks like a path and uh, I think it could just be the water f coming in at this angle and uh, flowing off the edge of the, the contour of the island and the water continues, kind of flows off the edge here and creates this natural, natural path, but it's not an, probably not an artificial path, so. 
Whoops. Similar type of deal here. This is this is one gives me pause. I'll say that it looks like some type of path. But once again, it could be an old river, and we do see what might be ancient clearing, large-scale clearing, patchy clearing of the area. Could be modern also, who knows. But uh, this path is what I wanted to look at again. You know, we've got this area of coast and this path here. But it could just be that this is the edge of the edges of an old river, and then the presence of it there caused water to approach the, the coast at such an angle as to create this this curve here or to give the illusion of or the to create some type of continuous curve here resulting from erosion of this feature combined with the way that this feature channels the water or affects the flow of the water so th this might be an old river. A lot of these paths might be old river or eroding streaks of or ribbons of bedrock. You know what I mean? Get a zoomed out view of it there. I think this is in Tasmania, Australia. So once again in that same area of Tasmania, I was talking here about this these back-to-back -back very clean bays but that's not necessarily super suspicious or artificial because it's just erosion approaching from two different angles so there's like this island and then this this area here and then kind of a tombolo type feature that forms you know the incident wave energy comes in around around the sides and creates an interference pattern which causes deposition of material between the island and the, the mainland and then it's kind of in this bendy pattern and you see a very similar thing here so this is another tombolo I think so there's like this island type area and then the mainland here and then this island acts as an obstacle to the incoming waves and the waves diffract or bend around this obstacle and there's constructive interference here along these paths and then it gradually smooths out to form this very clean curve so the material is deposited here and then rounded out in a very continuous clean cut looking way but i would say I'm, i don't i don't really think these are artificial anymore This one, I just wanted to point out this path here because it's it's down the way from right here, which is kind of a clean cut through the rock. Could be modern man man made work, but uh, down the way over here, and possible these paths right here. But uh, right here, what I wanted to point out, which I hadn't noticed before, was this edge here and it continues faintly up here so it is almost as if something traveled up this way uh, so there's like multiple possible maneuvers here this sharp this sharp edge here the sharp uh, kind of maneuver here like that and then this maneuver here possibly but it's also possible that when the water sloshes back from up here it just comes along this, it falls back around this path, recedes along this path and gradually erodes a, a groove. So this, this groove might not be artificial, but it's interesting to point out just to kind of give context to this example, which you probably don't even remember. And once again, this type of path looking thing curve here boy I, don't, uh, I could definitely see that just being the the water flowing in here it's sloshing back and forth and 
And it sloshes here and it gradually erodes out this way. And it's also possible that this is like a, a ribbon of different material or a ribbon of variation in the, the bedrock here. And then it gradually eroded because it was slightly softer than the surrounding rock here and here. And then that feature created this curve here or contributed to it. So I would say I'm less confident that this is artificial while still keeping it on the table. Um, so I don't know <laughs> if we got anywhere with this video. Less clarity maybe, but um, I don't know. I'm still going to do streaks for my next episode. Probably be a long one because there's a lot of stuff to look at. So-called streaks or beach ridges as I learned that they're called. But, um, hmm. Yeah, I'm still keeping on. Just gonna keep doing, keep doing. I'm gonna keep do, do uh, I'm gonna explore. Keep exploring. So just stick, stick, stick with me. Stick to it. And we're gonna, we're gonna get to, uh, hopefully we'll get to, I think we're gonna get to a, uh, some type of resolution or conclusion or lack thereof. Signing off from... I'll see you later. Uh... Okay. Oh... The tooling of Earth. The tooling of Earth. Maybe. Maybe even not. Maybe though. Cool! Goodbye!